Hi, it's Patrick Hatzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care, so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question in this series of questions from my client Sue. And the question last week was part three of My Dad Has End Stage HIV and is on ECMO in intensive care. Can he have a lung transplant? <clears throat> you can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another question from one of my clients, Sue, which are excerpts from phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me. And the question this week is part four of My Dad Has End Stage HIV and is on ECMO in intensive care. Can he have a lung transplant? And again, that's part four this week. You can also look at previous episodes of this series of questions from Sue by clicking on the links below this video and watch or read part one, part two, and part three. So Sue continues to describe her and her dad's situation as follows. So Sue writes, Hi Patrick, my sister has accepted no more can be done and so has my brother. They will, however, not be going back to the hospital. I have informed the ICU consultant and he said he will call me tomorrow to discuss what time they will withdraw treatment. I don't want my mum and I to be the ones to agree to a date and time and will rather insist that they should decide on timing. I don't want to wake the family up so early with a call, but if you could maybe reply with an email with some advice, that would be great. Having read the policies, I know the hospital needs a senior clinician to agree to a care plan with our family. For example, discuss what treatments to withdraw they, he will no, then he will no longer benefit from, or that may be detrimental to my dad and the time frames around it. Also, complete the DNR noting our comments. The policy on DNR states patients or families can oppose resuscitation, but not stop the DNR if the hospital deems this is, quote unquote, in the best interest of my dad. I don't want to make it look like that my mom and I were in agreement for withdrawal of treatment and DNR CPR as my dad is a fighter. And I, it could make it seem like we didn't have enough fight in us. I would rather the hospital make their decisions and note that we're not happy with everything as on the face of it, because my dad's overall experience of the NHS has been neglectful, which, which, as you know, we are taking up legally. What are your thoughts and many things from Sue? So here is my answer. Hi, Sue. I feel that now might be the time to meet with the ICU consultant face to face if and when you and your mum are ready. If you are not ready, then simply don't go. There is no rush as long as they can support your dad on ECMO and keep him alive. There is no doubt in my mind that your dad will pass away very quickly once ECMO and ventilation have been removed. Getting them to make the decision when and how to withdraw treatment might actually work in your favor. And it is something that he mentioned to me yesterday when I spoke to him, that he wants to take away the burden from you and your family. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't agree with this. However, in your situation, I believe your dad is in a real and not perceived end of life situation. What do I mean by that? Well, go and check out an article and a video that I wrote about the difference between real 
and perceived end-of-life situations when your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. I put a link to that article and video below this video in the written version of this blog or if you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below this video. When critically ill patients and their families are in perceived end-of-life situations, the suggestion of the intensive care team to let them make the decision when and how to withdraw treatment to take the burden away from the family can be highly manipulative from my perspective and experience. And normally I wouldn't recommend to agree to this. But your dad situation is different. Therefore, I believe it's okay to let them make the decision and it will in fact take away the burden from you and your family indeed. Let them be the bad guys, if you will. Especially with your dad's overall negative NHS experience, I understand how he would feel and I understand how you and your family feel. Again, maybe share this with the ICU consultant if you are comfortable and see what he says. I hope this makes sense. As it relates to the DNR, I suggest the following. Given your dad is on such high amounts of life support, such as the ECMO, ventilation, as well as significant doses of inotropes on vaso and vasopressors, a DNR is almost inconsequential and in your dad's situation of little to no use anyway. The reason for this is simply that the high amounts of life support are constant CPR, if you will anyway, without the ECMO, without the ventilation and without the inotropes and vasopressors, your dad will not be able to sustain life. To illustrate this even further, ECMO, ventilation and inotropes and vasopressors such as noradrenaline or norepinephrine and or adrenaline or epinephrine, your dad would not be able to live. I do have numerous questions answered on this website for my clients and readers from my one-on-one -on -one phone and Skype and email counseling and consulting sessions where we discuss those issues at length. And as I mentioned to you on our last phone call, almost nine times out of 10, I highly dispute the hospitals or the intensive care teams push towards a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment without family consent. I have lots of experience in successfully helping families in intensive care to get the best care and treatment for their critically ill loved one, including reversing a DNR do not resuscitate or NFR not for resuscitation order. In fact, I have even created a manual in how to successfully reverse DNRs or NFRs as well as withdrawal of treatment decisions. Again, I put a link towards that ebook in the written version of this blog. In your dad's situation, the goals of care have changed, however. The goals of care have changed from saving his life and getting the best treatment possible to end of life care goals. Well, you may wonder, what are the end of life care goals in your dad's situation? Well, they are to minimize suffering and pain. It sounds by what you are describing that your dad is not in any pain and that he seems quite comfortable. And it's important that he'll be comfortable and in no discomfort by the time they remove life support. The frustrating part, Sue, is that your dad's situation could have turned out differently altogether if you had known about the, the options of lung transplant as well as tracheostomy. Early on, as we discussed on our phone calls. Furthermore, his potential misdiagnosis earlier last year as MS or multiple sclerosis instead of HIV is not enhancing your trust in the NHS, which is totally understandable. This is why I keep saying that it's so important to look for help and advice early on when you have a family member in intensive care. You really can't be seeking advice early enough because as you have seen by now, you simply don't know what you don't know. And chances are intensive care teams are not being open and transparent with you. 
They simply don't take the time to explain things to you in detail. For now, Sue, prepare yourself mentally for the passing of your dad very soon, basically as soon as they remove life support. I know this is very hard and very difficult to face, and once again, keep in mind your dad is in a real and not in a perceived end-of-life situation. It might also be worthwhile to have another discussion with yourself, your mum and the ICU consultant if you feel like there are any remaining questions or if you are worried about your dad suffering and how to avoid it. Generally speaking, Sue, in end of life and withdrawal of treatment situations, in order to minimize suffering and pain, patients are usually receiving strong doses of sedatives such as midazolam or Versed and or fentanyl or morphine for pain. Given that your dad is already on midazolam or Versed and morphine, they will increase the dose significantly by the time they are removing love support so that he will be comfortable. I hope that helps, Sue. Let me know what other questions you have. We can get on the phone any time. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? Well, you get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, getting peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability, even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind-the-scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care. And how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me Find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, 
and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.